Okay, so the purpose here is to write what is called an electron configuration. Um, and like the name suggests, it is, you know, the configuration of the electrons or, you know, where the electrons are located uh, in relationship to the nucleus. So the nucleus is in the center. We know the electrons are floating around the nucleus in this electron cloud. Uh, well, the idea of this electron configuration is to give us a, a little more specific address as to where the electrons exist. Um, and it relates to a bit more complicated idea of, um, you know, Schrodinger's equation, his wave functions for an electron. Uh, but essentially, it's a pretty simple, um, a pretty simple idea that you can you can solve this electron configuration and, and figure out kind of where the electron is. Uh, the idea is 80% of the time. So, you know, Schrodinger's equation is based on probability, as we discussed. Uh, and this is the electron configuration of finding the electron in the most probable location 80% of the time. All right, so this right here, this chart right here is called the diagonal rule. Um, and essentially, it works like this on the periodic table. Uh, the nucleus is in the center. Um, and then starting right here, you come across what are known as, and we're only going to discuss the first two, which are energy levels and sublevels. So the most general description of the electron is where it is in an energy level. Energy levels are made up of sublevels. So there's this broad uh, spectrum, or the most general location of an electron known as an energy level. Energy levels are made up of sublevels. Right now on the periodic table, there are four sublevels, and they are S, P, D, and F. So S, P's, D's, and F's. Uh, the coefficient in front of these would be the energy level. So the first one you come across here is the 1S sublevel. All of the S's can hold two electrons. So that's how big they are. They can, you can stuff two electrons in there, then they're filled up. All of the P's can hold six electrons. The D's can hold 10, and the F's can hold 14. All right. So here's how this works. The first sublevel you come across would be the 1S. What that means is that is the sublevel that is closest to the nucleus. So the first one coming away from the nucleus you come to is the 1S. Then the 2S then the 2p, then the 3s. So you can see I'm following along here, these arrows diagonally across the chart that I've made. Um, then the 3p, then the 4s. And then they start to sort of overlap. After 4s comes 3d, then 4p, then 5s, then 4d, 5p, 6s, then 4f, 5d, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right now the periodic table goes up to 7p. Um, and I think this will make a little more sense in a second when we try this. So, so let me go uh, through what I have here. Um, we're going to write these electron configurations. Actually, no, I don't have this on this one. So let's just try it. All right, so I have a smaller version of it here. Uh, recall 2, 6, 10, and 14 is how many you can fit in there. All right, so we're going to do the electron configuration for mg. Uh, since it's an electron configuration, we've got to know how many electrons there are. Uh, so we're going to refer to the periodic table, and we see mg has an atomic number of 12 which means it has 12 protons. So the fact that this doesn't have a charge on it, so it's just mg, not mg with a plus 2, for example, that would mean if it has 12 protons, it must have 12 electrons because it's neutral. Um, I just realized I wrote that off where you can't see it. 12 electrons. So mg's 12 electrons are going to fit into this electron configuration by starting at the first diagonal and working your way down through the others until you total 12 electrons. Keeping in mind that s is hold 2, again, P's 6, D's 10, uh, and F's 14. So the first sublevel you come across is the 1S. Well, before you go past the 1S, you have to fill it up. Well, it's full with two electrons. So you use a superscript 2 to show that there are two electrons in the 1S. All right, then you go to the next one, the 2S. Once again, it's an S. S is hold 2. So we've got to put um, 2 in the 2S before we can move on to the next. So now I did 1S. I did 2S. Next is the 2p sublevel. P's can hold 6. So I'm going to put all 6 in there, and I can see I've totaled now uh, 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6. I've got 10 electrons placed. So I've got to keep going. The next two are going to go into the 3s sublevel, and this right here is called 
the electron configuration for magnesium. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. Add in the superscripts, you get 12 electrons, which is what we figured out mg would be. All right, nickel. Um, nickel's atomic number, I'm looking at the periodic table, is 28. So I need 28 electrons um, in nickel. Move that over a little so I can write a 28 right here. So 28. Once again, you've got to start closest to the nucleus, fill that one up, and then work your way away from the nucleus as, you know, it's increasing in energy as you go away from the nucleus as we go across these diagonals. Uh, so the first one is, again, the 1s2, then 2s2, and then 2p6, and 3s2. That gets us through the first three diagonals. So now the next diagonal that fills is the 3p, and we got 6 in there. Again, we've got to fill it up before moving on. Um, oops, wrong button. There we go. All right, so now I have uh, 10 plus, I have 18 electrons filled there. So I've got to keep going because I've got to get the 28. So next is 4s2. All right, so again, following the diagonal, next comes the 3d. And we can put 10 in there. Um, but we're not going to put 10 in there. Why not? Well, we could put a possibility of 10 in there. But if I add up what I got, I just glanced over at my periodic table, realized I went past it. Uh, we have 10, 18, 19, 20. So right here at 4s2, I have 20 electrons. I am only going to place 28, so I have 8 more to go into the 3d. So it can hold a maximum of 10, but once I got the 3d8, um, that equaled 28 electrons. So that's the end of the uh, configuration for nickel. Now you're going to find out, I'm going to show you a shortcut to this, uh, which is why, you know, we're never going to do this. We're only doing this to sort of understand the idea of how they fill um, and to figure out the shape and the pattern on the periodic table. Um, so K, potassium, has 19 electrons, atomic number 19, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, so there's 10, 3s2, 3p6, there's 18. So I only need one more, so that's going to go into the 4s. Um, it can hold a possible uh, two electrons, but I only had one more because I had 19 electrons now, so all 19. Now, uranium's a crazy one um, because we're all the way down there at 92 electrons. So 92 electrons, um, kind of ridiculous, but I'll do it anyway. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6. 4s2. So again, I got me to the bottom of that arrow. I'm going to go on the next row so I can keep going. So next comes 3d10. 4p6, and 5s2, going right down the next arrow. So now I'm at 5s2. Um, 5s2, if I add those together, is 38 electrons. So I'm at 38. So I've got to go to the next row. 4d10, 5p6, and 6s2. So again, following right along, I'm now down at the bottom of that arrow, and I now have 56 electrons. So I've got to keep going. I'm going to go to the next row again. So the next arrow or the next diagonal is 4F. We can put 14 in the Fs. 5D10, 6P6, 7S2. So counting again, now I have 88 electrons. So I have 88 electrons when I get to 7S2. Well, I only need 92, so I need four more. So those four electrons are going to go into the 5F, and that will total 92 electrons. Well, if you had to do this every single time, you'd go crazy, and you'd end up messing it up or, or figuring out a pattern, which is really what the key to this is. Uh, so the assignment that we did in class was uh, we did the end of electron configurations. We filled in this blank periodic table, and we figured out the, the pattern that will help us to solve electron configurations without having to use that diagonal rule ever again. Um, and and that pattern worked like this. Well, these first two right here are the S's. And even more specific than that, they went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 going down the periodic table. So these were the 5S's, the 4S's, the 3S's, etc., etc. Um, over here on this side were the P's. Um, and the P's corresponded to the same coefficient as the s's. So 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 4p, 7s, 
7p. This middle part right here were the d electrons. Um, and they were always one energy level lower than the s's. So going across the fourth row, you had the four s's, but the three d's, and then back to the four p's again. Five s's, four d's, five p's. Down here on the bottom, pulled out of the periodic table and placed down here were the f's. Now there's always some kind of designation right here on the periodic table to show that you know, they belong right there. Um, and they are two energy levels lower. So after 6s comes all right, F, four F's, and then back to five D's following the pattern three, four, five, six. And then six P's. So across the next row, seven S, five F, six D, and 7p. All right, so if you didn't follow that, go listen to it again. Um, I think you'll get it. Essentially, the s's and the p's are the same energy level corresponding to the numbers going down the side. The d's are one lower, and the f's are two lower. All right, so now how does that help us? Well, we can do a shortcut. I'm going to skip through some of this just to show you the shortcut. All right, so there's essentially what I showed you. Um, another thing is the f's would fit if the periodic table had the S where they belong, they'd go right there. And we discussed in class, you know, why don't they do that? And really, it's just a practical reason. Look how big that sucker is. It wouldn't fit in a chart. You wouldn't be able to put it on a notebook piece of paper. So, you know, they don't do that. Rip these out, slide those in, slide these over. Now it fits on a nice 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper or a nice chart to stick on the wall. Um, and uh, you make some kind of designation showing that once you get here, you got to go down there. All right, so... So here we go. Let me show you the shortcut. OK, so the electron configuration for chlorine with all 17 of its electrons are 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5. That's both following the diagonal rule or just following the periodic table left to right, top to bottom, um, and you will come up with that configuration. Now, the shortcut configuration is using the noble gas neon and then continuing after neon to get to the, the um, sublevel that you need for chlorine. Um, now the reason that works is neon is one of the noble gases and it represents a filled energy level. So everything from neon on back to the top of the periodic table would be all filled up. So you continue from neon on the next row of the periodic table until you get to fluorine. Let me bring up a periodic table here. Um, and I probably should have cut and pasted one, but I didn't, so let me go back to this one. Why not? Let's use this one. All right, so here's fluorine. We're doing the electron configuration. So what you do is you go, um, or the chlorine we're doing, sorry. Chlorine. Let me switch color. Let's go blue. So we're doing the electron configuration for chlorine. So what you do is you go up one row and then all the way over to the right, and you write that noble gas in brackets. So that represents neon and everything that comes before neon. So the first, that represents the first 10 electrons, because neon's number 10. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So now, in order to get to chlorine, we got to go to the next row, and we got to write down all the sublevels that we come across until we get to chlorine. Well, we're going to come across the three s's, and then the three p's. So the correct configuration, that is neon, 3s2, because they're filled up, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3p, 5. So that's the shortcut configuration for chlorine. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do tin. Let me, uh, let me get rid of that. So tin. All right, so we go up and over, and we're going to write kr in brackets. So we're doing tin, sn. KR. So again, up and all the way to the right. That represents that filled energy level. Everything from that 36 electrons for krypton on all the way back to the start of the periodic table is all filled up. So we go to the next row. Now these is one, two, three, four, five. So these are the five S's, the four D's, 
and then the five P's. So following the trend, knowing where the S, the P's, the D's, and the F's are, and what the coefficients that correspond to them, remembering that the S's and the P's are the same, the D's are one lower. So 5S2, because they're filled up, we're going past them. 4D10, again, we're filled up, we're going past them. And then 5P, 1, 2. So you end, I always get the question, do I stop before it or do I stop on it? You stop on it. So we're going right to the box that contains tin, because that's P1, P2. And then if you were to add up the electrons, you know, this is 36 electrons because of krypton. Well, it should add up to 50. So you can see 36, 38, 48, 49, 50. So there are 50 electrons represented in the shortcut, just like there was in 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. See, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6. 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. Well, I don't have to write all of that, because I'm writing kr, and that represents all of that. All right, let's do one more. Um, let me erase those again. All right, let's do uh, one that has Fs in it. Let's go with, uh, let's go with PO, polonium. Polonium has 50, I can't really read my, no, 84 electrons. Uh, my periodic table's a bit blurry here, the one I picked. All right, let me put those numbers back here. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. All right, so we're going up and over. We're going to write xenon in brackets. So that Xe represents everything from xenon on back up, the first 54 electrons. So we've got to go across the next row. Now, remember, going across the next row, here's the six S's. Right here is where they belong. So six S. Remember, these are two lower. The four F's, the five D's, and the six P's all belong on that sixth row. So 6S2, 4F, all filled up, 14, 5D, filled up again, 10, and then 6P, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 6P, 4. So 6S2, 4F14, 5D10, and 6P, 4. That is the... Um, the a shortcut electron configuration for PO. Once again, the noble gases are used because they represent a filled energy level. So by putting that in brackets, I did not have to do the first 54 electrons here. I just had to include everything after that until I got to the correct number for PO, polonium. All right, so that's the shortcut configuration. Um, and uh, I guess that's it.